my name is Marie Levy Pabst, and I teach parents how to get some control in their lives with systems. And I wanted to hop on here today to talk about what it means to name your day. I've been thinking about this this week because today um, I did the thing that I know I sometimes coach people not to do, which is I had an, all my to-do list for work is all urgent things. It's all, some of it's also important, but it's all urgent things. All things that have to be done today or probably should have been done yesterday. And likewise, at home, there's a number of things that have to happen today and have to happen tomorrow that could have happened earlier but haven't, or I haven't done them yet. And I just want to share a little bit about why that was and the intentionality behind that. Not because my day is so special, but mostly because I think it points to something that's true about both creating balance and also toddlers eating food. So I don't know if any other folks have heard this, but when my kids were younger, um, we were told, you know, when they're starting to eat food or starting to, um, you know, have a few meals a day, a lot of people I know, including myself, are concerned, like, do I need to worry about what they eat every meal? Like, what if my child only eats Cheerios all day? Or what if they, you know, only have something that resembles a vegetable once a week? And I remember our pediatrician telling me, um, telling us that, Really, it doesn't matter so much what they eat in one meal or even one day. Like, so long as over the span of a week, they're getting enough nutrients overall, they'll be fine. So if one of their meals is Cheerios, or if three of their meals are Cheerios, that's fine. Or if they eat a lot of toast, that's fine, as long as they get some other stuff throughout the week. And I remember that was a huge relief to me as a parent to know that it wasn't like my child's nutrition was riding on every single meal. And I think that's true with a lot of the choices we make about how we spend our time during the day, whether it's planning for work or planning for home. That sometimes we need to sort of, instead of trying to make every day balanced, we need to just make sure we're sort of balanced out over the span of a week. So I had a weekend that was actually pretty low key and I had some downtime, which was lovely. So I sort of got the downtime then. I jumped right back into work on Monday and Tuesday and I worked you, an extra few hours each day, longer than I normally do on a project that's been really important. And it's um, one of my essential values for these couple months to finish things that I've started. And it was something I'd started a long time ago and wanted to finish. And I did. It was really exciting. And then today and tomorrow is all about all the urgent stuff, all the things that didn't happen while I was working on that project. And so that's sort of how my work week balances out. Every day is not balanced into some urgent stuff and some important stuff and long-term projects and short-term projects. Instead, it's sort of like every day is its own thing. And I think that's true for home too. Like it's worth naming what kind of day you're going to have. Are you going to have a day of survival? Is it a day of survival because you didn't sleep last night? Is it a day of connection where you're going to connect with your kids? Is it a day of together, you know, getting it together where you're actually going to do a bunch of stuff to help you feel more on top of it? I think if you name your day and don't expect your day to be five things, expect your day to just be one or two things, um, then we can focus on that and do that. And yeah, some stuff will get dropped, but if we're intentional about our use of time, the stuff that gets dropped shouldn't be the most important stuff. It's going to be the stuff that can get dropped and that you can always pick up later on. All right, so those are some thoughts from the week. I love you.